Okay, so this is Mr. West, what's its most stylish? And what I'm looking at here is a year 10 mock exam, Anglo Saxon and Norman England section. Now, you've been given a sheet by me which uh, uh, is a review of your mock exam, and this obviously works on the right hand side uh, for the questions that relate to that. What you need to do is to go through, watch the video, write down the targets on your uh, sheet of things you need to do if you've got to answer that question again. They can be general things like include a line of reasoning. Or they can be specific content things that you missed out. A good student might use one colour for general and one colour for specific content. Right, let's get into it. Okay, so you can see some incredible IT on display here for me. As I managed to put a photo in that's not quite gone straight. It will look good on my computer, but there you go. Anyway, describe two peach features of the Anglo-Saxon social system. Okay, there's up to two feet marks for identifying up to two features, and the second marks are awarded for support and information. So if you tell me something about one of these elements on here, okay, the peasants, the slaves, the king, and then give you some support and information, you can get up to four marks for that. I'm not going to spend too long looking at that. If you can't read that off the video, then just give me a shout and get the page of the textbook opened up. Uh, but can you make sure you've got four marks? But really, spend a couple of minutes on this because there's more marks to be gained on other parts of it. Okay? Okay, so now we've gone on to the uh, succession crisis. Uh, after the death of Edward the Confessor. Now then, this is a question that everyone had to do. Now what I've done is I've put needs a brief intro with a line of reasoning included. And I just feel I've put needs in inverted commas there because you don't actually need to include a brief intro. Okay, uh, But what I would say is that uh, for me personally, when uh, I discussed this with Mr. Otway, uh, he said you don't need one. I said, well, where would you put your line of reasoning? And he said that's a good point. So I decided to put an intro in there very briefly, and you'll see on the next slide an example of one. It needs two or three paragraphs using the Mr. Otway sheet. Basically, as a student, you fall into two categories here. If you've not done the revision and you don't know it, then you need to use Mr. Otway's sheet here, which I've emailed to you, to get the detail down uh, about this, okay? If you have got the information in, you need to maybe look at the style and structure of your paragraph, okay? Because some people wrote the right stuff, but they still didn't access the top level because of the way they've written it. So you need to make sure that you start with the main reason, and you, these paragraphs need linking to the question and the line of reasoning. And that's what I've tried to do on the next sheet. Okay, so for four or six, you need two paragraphs and you need three uh, if you're on seven to nine. Let's have a look at the next sheet. Okay, so I'm not going to read this, but what I've tried to do with the colour code is to try and give you an understanding of how to write this particular answer. So, um, my main reason for the succession crisis in 1066 was because of Edward's lack of a blood heir. There you go, in the first line, even though we don't really need an introduction, I've put what I think. And then look, here's my line of reasoning. Even though Edward's capriciousness was undoubtedly a factor, he wouldn't have had to be so capricious, if I can say it, if he had a blood heir. He wouldn't have had to say to so many people, you can be the next king, if he had a clear blood heir. All right? Then you can see what I've done here, as I've given a bit of explanation. Previous succession has shown the most likely person to take over from a dead king was the dead king's son. Edward did not have a son. And whilst this was not a hard and fast rule at the time, a succession crisis would have been much less likely if Edward had a son given a couple of bits of evidence in yellow, and then I've also said, uh, and put my line of reasoning again in purple. Okay? And what you can see there is, is that, is from the colours, you need to make sure you've done that. Have you explained it? Have you, which is green, have you used the evidence, which is yellow, and then have you at the end tried to link it to the question or your line of reasoning, which could be uh, purple in this case. Then I've got another factor that led to the succession crisis was Edward's capriciousness. This was, people were really good at knowing who he'd said could be the next king. Really good standard, okay? Not waste sheets there if you need it. Edward didn't make it clear who should be a successor because he suggested to several people they should be king. And evidence for this, I'm not written all the evidence out, okay? But now I'll put at the end of the paragraph, this is undoubtedly an important factor because had Edward made it clear who was to be a successor to only one person, then a succession crisis would have been much less likely. But, and this is what we're missing out, we need a line of reasoning. And here's my bit in purple. Despite this, Edward would not have been in a position if he had a blood heir. That makes Edward's lack of a blood heir more important than his capriciousness. I've linked back to my line of reasoning. So, basically, what I'm saying here, okay, I'm saying here and here, and I will be saying at the end of the next paragraph and in my conclusion as well. It'll be a very brief conclusion. So, have a look at that. Look at the different colours and try to make sure that your answer is fulfilling those different colours as it goes down.
Okay, so on to the two questions now uh, uh, that you choose between. This is the first one. William was able to keep control of England in the years 1066 to 75 was the building of castles. Again, we've got the Otway excellent sheet here. Okay, you've got me emailed that. If you need to know anything, have a look at that. All right, now, it needs a brief intro with a line of reason to try and think of the order here. Did one thing lead to another? That's what we're going to try and build into our line of reasoning, okay? Um, and... Yeah, all right. Uh, do the main reason first, okay? And these paragraphs need a link into the question, and it should say line of reasoning there, but it's been lost as I've moved onto my iPad to do this, okay? So, yeah, that's what you need to do. It needs two or three paragraphs. You need to use the sheet that's there, and we need to make sure we've got the link in it. In. Let's have a look at the example. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of this out, okay, but you can have a look at it. You can pause the tip and have a look at it. The main reason that William was able to keep control of England was through his use of castles. Right, have I said what I think at the beginning? Yes, yeah, there. Although his leadership was important in dealing with the rebellions when they occurred, castles were a permanent reminder of Norman superiority in England, and they prevented many rebellions from breaking out. The purple bit there is my line of reasoning. Okay, then we go on to the next one. All right, and you can see castles were a key part of the Norman strategy for keeping control of England. The very image of the castle was a constant reminder to the England that they had been defeated. Evidence for this is I used to use straight off the Otway sheet here. Okay, evidence there, and then they would have spent not have spent that much money and time and effort to build so many if the Normans did not think that they were important, a vital way of controlling. You wouldn't have built seven hundred castles or whatever it is. Okay, uh, five hundred, sorry, and you wouldn't have had. 7,000 Normans controlling the whole population if that hadn't worked. But then what you can see, I go on to the next paragraph now, and this is where the line of reasoning comes in a little bit. All right, so another fact that helped William keep control was his bold and ruthless leadership. William quickly dealt with many rebellions personally and ruthlessly. Evidence for this is that. Look at the Otway sheet, get some evidence in. Then my blue bit, this is undoubtedly an important factor because William's reputation meant that when he arrived at a rebellion, many rebels gave up straight away. But then, despite this, and that's quite a good connective that I've used there, I think. So despite this, William would not have been in such a strong position when he arrived at a rebellion if it wasn't for the castle, which prevented rebellions gaining strength before William arrived. Only once, and it says it's on that way sheet, was a castle ever taken. So even though there were maybe firefighting, sometimes quite literally, they were able to do that. And then when William arrived, he was able to hammer home his advantage. Okay, So I'm saying without the castles, he wouldn't have had the same advantage. And that's my line of reasoning running right through. Pause this, have a look, and get the number of paragraphs into your answer that you need. Okay, then, here we go. A question on the Battle of Hastings. Now, I would have done this all day long, okay? Any question comes up about why William won the Battle of Hastings, I'm all over it, right? Because I don't think it's that difficult. I think we do it in year seven, and I think ultimately you've got the glamour sheet from off way there. Look at it, looking good down at the bottom there. Just, you're in dreamland, okay? Again, it's the same advice as I put on the last one. Did one thing lead to another? That's what we need to try and do. Start with the main reason and link them to the question. The number of people who did not write about luck on this question is ridiculous. Absolutely. So come on, sort it out. Have a look at the example. Use the Otway sheet and get this sorted to a high standard. Okay, so here we go then. The main reason that William was able to defeat the English at the Battle of Hastings was luck. Again, you'll notice a pattern here. Right at the beginning, I've said what I think. Then comes a bit of an explanation, my line of reasoning. Although the tactics of the Normans were undoubtedly important, it was the amount of luck that William had that allowed him to be in such a position to use his clever tactics to win the battle. So that's my line of reasoning. Again, I keep doing the same thing here. Right at the top, what I think, and then my line of reasoning. Okay? Luck was more important reason for the English defeat at the Battle of Hastings. Without luck... Uh, William would have not have been in such a superior position at Hastings and would have been facing a much larger and fresher English army. Evidence for this is, and there's some evidence in there for you, and then the blue line, look, without these elements of bad luck, the English army would have been much stronger and would have had a much greater chance of winning the Battle of Hastings. The battle took nearly eight hours and was a close-run affair, and even with William's clever tactics, it's unlikely it would have defeated a much stronger and fresher force. So it was close. Had William had a stronger had Harold had a stronger army... Who's to say that William would have still won, even with his clever tactics? That's my line of reasoning. It's coming out again. Look, I mentioned it at the top. Here it, oop, not the iPad over again. Here it is again. And then another factor was William's clever tactics. Evidence is that you can get those from the Otway sheet. This undoubtedly had an important factor because without William adjusting the trajectory of his arrows and using the firm retreat, he would not have won the battle. But 
Despite this, William would not have been in such a strong position when he arrived at Hastings if it wasn't for his good luck, and he would have faced a much larger, fresher force, which would have made the chance of the English winning much higher. Okay? So, have a look at your answer. Get the two or three paragraphs. Use the hot weight sheet. Get your line of reasoning going. And let's have a look at your dirt when you've done it.